Cine, the Council on International Non-Theatrical Events, has awarded this film a Cine Eagle in token of its excellence and has selected it to represent the United States of America in international motion picture events abroad. listening, which I do, I don't miss any complimentary, is that how you say it? Documentary. Documentary, yeah. On TV, but if they talk and talk and talk, I shut it off. Just telling you. Because they have nothing to show. But look what the things I got to show here. I don't have to do a lot of talking. Is that right or not? I mean it. You got things for people to look at and to hear. I played every city that could have a theater that people could go to, I played everyone. No, you got that in your blood. No, you want to keep going, traveling, another city, another city, meet new people. I'm glad you asked me that because uh, you have it in your blood. You want to keep going. That's why Berlin wrote, there's no people like show people. Those lyrics mean something. That's not just another song. <laughs> did get a break of a lifetime. The manager of the Knickerbocker Hotel was a friend of one, uh, Sam Warner, Harry Warner. How can you beat that? Friend to him. So they're talking there. He said, well, he said, next week we're going to start having auditions for the first sound pictures in the world. He said, do you know anybody you could, uh, could recommend? He said, I got a guy sleeping up here, plays a uke, puts a harmonic one up, turns a uke upside down, plays a banjo, does everything. Where are you? He said, up. Oh, He's up in the second floor, 212. Said, call him. Said, hello? Yeah. He's sleeping. I'm sorry I woke you up. His name is Eddie Bell. 
You this said, was New York already. Yeah, on, 40, on 45th Street, the Nicopaca Hotel. Anyhow, he said, Roy, put your robe on, bring your instruments down. I want Harry Warner of the Warner Brothers. I'm telling you, my heart was going so fast that I, I he woke me out of a dead sleep. I said, I can't play now. Get in the elevator, I'll send the, I'll send the, one of the bell boys up to help you down. They did. I went in the green room. I played. When I got to the ukulele, Harry Warner said, that's what we want. Right after that, I got on the big time. My first date was, was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I got off the train, I see streetcars by Roy Smick, Wizard of the Strings, the first artist to make a talking picture. I got scared of anyone to walk in the stage door. I really, I got scared before nobody even wanted me at 250. Now I'm going to get $1,250 a week. When the manager came back in Tulsa, Oklahoma, he said, Roy, very nice to have you. Yeah, thanks. So he said, he's counting it. And I'm sitting there, my little you. So when he finished, he said, you're going to count the money? He said, no. I said, you counted it, didn't you? He said, no, but he said, if, you, if I leave, and you count it, and it's short. And that's it. I want you to count it. I said, you count it. That's good enough for me. And I said, I thank you very much the way you treated me. You've been wonderful to me. I thank you very much. He said, that's the way you want it. There's your 1250. I hope to have you back here again next fall. I said, thank you. And uh, I picked up the money and put it in the UK. <laughs> Tell you, that's true. Roy never went in for sports. Roy didn't play, on account of those hands, he never played ball. He never played, uh, he didn't go to a bowling alley. He didn't play tennis. He didn't go fishing. Because if anything happened to his hands, forget it. At one time, his hands were insured with Lloyds of London. When I picked up the guitar, it was back in 1927. When I bought about every Roy Speck record I could get, because there were no teachers. The other professionals stayed mostly around studios or in the big orchestras. And Roy has done more to inspire the young performers because they had opportunities to hear him on recordings and they had opportunities like I did to see him perform in person. played all this Hawaiian music. 
first, we didn't have no instruments. The Hawaiians didn't have no instruments. Remember that. And the Spanish brought the guitar over. So the Hawaiians took the guitar and they played it, see? They played the slack key and their fingers got hurt, see? The original guy was Joseph K. Kuku. So he took his pocket knife and laid it on the lap and played this knife on this string and become, that's how the steel guitar was invented. <laughs> now the, all this country music, you see the steel guitar playing, you notice? And cowboy music, they learned it from the Hawaiian. Quite a few uh, uh, steel guitar players, yes, but uh, naturally Roy uh, in that era was perhaps the tops of all of them, and uh, he he was kept busy all the time because he uh, worked a lot of good record dates with uh, many of the recording artists, and also he made records on his own. To that silver hair, daddy of mine. Every time that I came to New York for a recording session, we'd try to get a hold of Roy and uh, have him clear three or four dates. He could work uh, just about any kind of dates that we wanted. come down, right? But not this. Portuguese came to Hawaii. They brought this ukulele, and they call it small guitar. We call it ukulele. Ukulele means a bounce. It looked like a flea. The damn thing looked like a flea, and a jumping flea. That's what it means. Ukulele. Roy Smack. Oh, Roy Smack the Wizard. I said, well, whatever you want to call me. He said, gee, Wizard, said, this is great. He said, how do you want me to announce you tonight when we have the show? I said, well, just say Roy Smack, the Wizard of the Strings, and uh, stage screen and recording artist, something like that. I'll give you a big bill to buy. 
Oh, I've seen you many times in Broadway. He said, gee, it's certainly good to see you. And he walked off. Now the show is on. And now that's for me to go on. And he comes out. He says, hey, hello, everybody. And he was loaded now. He was so drunk in the afternoon. He said, I want to say something. I got a fellow here. You never had anything like it for one person. You play your banjo and you can the Hawaiian guitar, Spanish guitar. I'm telling you, you're going to have a big treat. He makes records. He's been in the movies. He made the first movie. He played for King and Queen. He's done everything. Gives me great pleasure to introduce the Desert on Wings. <laughs> Cross feet legs. He was in Vaudeville. Blackstone was his next big name, and he was in Vaudeville. They all started in Vaudeville. What do you think Bob Hope started in Vaudeville? Gracie Allen and, and George Burns in Vaudeville. Jimmy Durant, Jack Benny, you name them, you name them, and they were in Vaudeville. Every week, the people, they go to the theater, and they see nine different acts. You open up with a dog act, and you get two dancers. You get a singer, then you get a sketch, then you get a soloist. It's so entertaining. Then they had talking pictures. People see a movie and they see Vaudeville for the same price. It was a great thing. You see the picture and you see five acts of Vaudeville. And then, then when TV came in, I said, TV? That's a box where they buried Vaudeville. I used to be on the road 30 weeks at a time. But today, these people go on and make a name, look at this, overnight from coast to coast. If they want to bring Vaudeville back tomorrow, they couldn't. If all the stars are gone, all the artists, all those people are all old now. They're gone, and there's nobody to take their place. But you can just take a, an ordinary, uh, 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 they call a star on TV. What do you call it? You call, what do you they call them superstars. That's what burns me. Super. They call these superstars. Yeah, if some yeah. of the old, say, if Caruso got up, or some of the old, the real established stars who strove and, and starved and, and Work, work their ears off to get for many, many years to get to a spot. Those were not called, those were stars. But this dribble that's on today, they call superstars, if you please. Superstars. That is right. You know what? They can go on TV one night and be known across the United States, right? Like Mr. Tracy and myself. I used to get in the town, get on a train, no sleeper. Sit up all night, get off, get in the cab, go to the theater, put my makeup on, tune my instruments, not even a cup of coffee in my stomach. You think those people today would do that? Oh, that's, is that right? I mean, it, it, it's a new world. Boy, I had to remember. Boy, had a car, boy, had a chauffeur. Boy had a sleeping maid. That's right. Had a sleeping maid. If I hadn't, you'd think this would be like this. I'd say, come on now. <laughs> and dust the boys off while you're at it. But, uh, of course, you know, 
Everything changes, everything changes. Time doesn't stand still. We don't stand still with it. And you keep those memories. Smile for Tom DeRay. Wonderful, wonderful days. They were enjoyable days, but that's a thing that's gone. You can't recapture those things. You can't. It doesn't come back. And that's why the younger generation now, they're watching a lot of the old movies that would bring back part of it, but not all, but part of it. every night that I can get out of bed and that I can pick up my instruments and still play them. But I had some agents say, oh yeah, you can do a lot of things, nobody does, but you're too old. No, I said, I'm too old if I can't do it anymore, right? But I do all the things that I did for the last 40 years in my instruments. So why am I too old?
Thank <laughs> you. 